x times 9, you're getting 9x. You put the 9 in front, you have 9 root 3 in this case, over 18. That's the way we deal, that's the way we deal with these, uh, these fractions. <coughs> okay, now that we have a common denominator, what common denominators say is that you're going to combine your fractions, your denominator is going to be how much? Yeah, when we add or subtract, we don't change the denominator. On the numerator, we do it just like any other fractions. We have our first numerator, whatever that sign is, our second numerator, and then we try to simplify. Can you combine those roots? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got 10 root 3 minus 9 root 3. Do we have the same root? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have the same radicand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you can combine them. Mm -hmm. We just do 10 minus 9. How much do you get? 1. 1 what? Root 3. So we're going to get root 3 over 8. We don't have to put the 1. It's like saying 1x. But we would get 1 root 3. So we're going to put root 3 <laughs> over 18. Notice how simplifying your, your radical here really helped you. Already had a, a common radical. That way you just multiply your numbers, your coefficients, and that really helps. Okay. Otherwise, you're going to have to simplify this at some point. Somewhere you're going to have to do that. So I know it's confusing. The first... The first thing we did when you had a radical over a radical, we didn't simplify first, we combined them first. That's always what you do when you have a radical over a radical. However, if you don't, then sure, go ahead and simplify that because there's nothing you're going to have to combine later. It's just that one root. I hope you'll feel alright with this so far. Okay, one last question for you. Can I simplify this and get square root of 1 over 6? Does that work? No. Square root of 1 over, can I just go 1 over 6? No. If I had a root over a root, sure, I could combine them, and that would make that fraction, but I don't. Okay, so I cannot just simplify within a root unless I have that other root to combine it with. Shall we try one more? Yes, please. I like it. <laughs> yes, please, may I have some more math? Absolutely, you may. <laughs> I have an abundance of math to give. No shortage here. No shortage. Cube root of 5x over 27. That's one cube root of a fraction plus 4 cube root of 5x. Oh my gosh, what in the world do we do now? Firstly, do I even have two fractions here? No. Kind of, well, sort of, I guess. I guess. This looks like a fraction, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I know that with this, I could break this up as a cube root of 5x over, over what? Cube root of Good, the cube root of 27. Not just 27, right? Because we know it's cube root of both the numerator and denominator. Cube root of 27. Great. Plus, but wait a minute, how do I make this a fraction? Let's put it over 1. We can always change something to a fraction by putting this over 1. Now I've got two fractions. Now I do. I can change this into the cube root of the numerator over cube root of the denominator, no problem. I can always put an expression over 1 and change it into a fraction. Now, before we do anything more, we're supposed to simplify these things. We split this up, but that's just because I know what the cube root of 27 is. And I want to make sure I can find a common denominator here. And it's real hard to find the, the common denominator when you have a cube root, right? What's the common denominator? I don't know. Cube root of 27? It's kind of hard to deal with. Can we do the cube root of 27, though? Okay. Three. Three. We can do three. Three's a lot easier to deal with than the cube root of 27. So instead of the cube root of 5x, we'd look to simplify that too. We can't. Cube root of 5 we'd look to simplify that. We can't. We're going to have the cube root of 5x over 3 plus 4 cube root of 5x over 1. Folks, give me a little head nod if you can make it down that far. Feel right with that. Mm -hmm. okay. What do you need to do next? Well, uh, second fraction. Do it. Find me a common denominator, multiply what you have to, combine your, your fractions. Go ahead and do that now.
Did you do it? As I was writing? Okay. LCD? Three. Okay, clearly three. It's only the number we got. This piece of besides one. So we would multiply this by three over three. This we don't need to multiply anything. So we're going to have the cube root of 5x over 3 plus. Now what happens here? We have 3 over 3. I know for a fact the denominator is going to be 3. That's the easy part. 3 times 1 is 3. What does that 3 get multiplied by? The 4. Not this one? No, just this one. So we should have on your paper 12 cube root 5x. Did you get that? Okay, the next thing that we're supposed to do is make one fraction out of this thing. So when we do that, of course we'll have a 3 on the denominator. We don't actually add denominators. We just keep them the same when we're adding fractions. We've got a cube root of 5x plus 12 cube root of 5x. Are they combinable? Yeah, we get exactly the same root, exactly the same radicand. We get a cube root, great. Radicand's 5x. We got 12 of them here. How many do we have here? So all together, how much you got? 13, cool. Cube roots of 5x over 3. That's as good as we can do. 13 cube root of 5x over 3. Ladies and gentlemen, would you raise your hand feel okay adding and subtracting these radicals? Cool, so our idea are simplify, get like radicals, then we just add them by the coefficients or subtract them by the coefficients. We're going to move on to multiplying. I want to talk about this a little bit. Do you remember how to do problems like this? This is all like a refresher. We've done every one of these problems so far in this class. I just want to make sure that we're, we're okay with it. Firstly, how would you do this problem? Okay, so 3 goes to the 2, 3 goes to the x. You would get 3 times 2 plus 3 times x. True? Mm -hmm. Generally, we don't even show that step. We usually just go 6 plus 3x. And the next one, what would you do there? Which is a fancy word for distribute. When you have two terms times two terms. So same idea. So if I were to distribute, you'd get x squared. X squared. Good, because you're doing x times x, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, we get a minus 2x and a plus 3x and a minus 6. Are you OK with where those numbers are coming from? And then you combine it like terms that you had. You okay with the x squared, right? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, when you do the x, x squared and the, this minus 2x plus, are you going to get minus x or minus x squared? Which one? Mm -hmm. Minus x or minus x squared, which do you think? Plus x. Plus x. Plus x. Or plus x. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did I confuse wow. you? Yeah, I guess I'm the one that's a little off today. <laughs> Yeah, plus like, x, that's what I meant to say. I'm questioning myself today. Hmm? I'm questioning myself today. Are you? Yes, but yeah, a little bit. Wait a second. Thing. Is you Mr. Wrote Leonard the right? Three. He is the math teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Two over the one, and I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, so when we, when we combine this, we're certainly not getting the x squared, though. That's my point. We don't get an x squared. We leave that, the x one alone. I showed you something like that earlier today, right? Where, where, we, where we talked about that. That was important. Can't combine any of this, we're done. Now, what we're going to do is combine the ideas of distribution, because that is multiplication after all, it's just multiplying, with our roots. Before we do that, though, I want you to really focus on if this idea is different than this idea. Do we do a different thing here? Yep. In this case, when we have two roots, the product rule says the square root of 3 times the square root of 5 have the same exact roots. I can actually make that the square root of 3 times 5 or get the square root of 15. That's what I can do. If I have the same root, I can multiply them. Now in this case, and this by the way works because you're, you're basically using an exponent rule here. This is 3 to the 1 half and 5 to the 1 half. And so you're putting that under the same parentheses as 3 times 5 to the 1 half. It's using, uh, I don't remember the, the actual number of the rule, but it is a rule on your exponents. Uh, so that's, that's why this works. Now the square root of 2 times 5, not the square root of 5, just 5. Can I put those into the same root? No. If I had the root, sure. If I had the root, absolutely. But I don't. This is saying 5 times of the square root of 2. Or in other words, square root of 2 added it to itself 5 times. <coughs> square root of 2 plus 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 square root of 2. That's 1, 2, 3. That's 5 square root of 2. That's all you can do. You do not do 
it's sort of tempting. Although oftentimes that's the mistake I will see on your test is a lot of people will give me this right there because you're going fast. You know, you're trying to do this and this, and it's confusing when you're doing both right next to each other to get one right and get the other one wrong, uh, get, get them both right. Because they look similar, the only thing that this is missing is a square root, right? And people in their head, you want to go, oh, we're multiplying, that's 10. Yay! Okay. <laughs> not so much, not so much. You can be very careful. Follow those rules that we're talking about in this class. Now, let me show you how this is applied to the problems we're going to be doing. Does this look similar to one of the problems I gave you over here? One of these problems. First one or second one? First one. Definitely the first one. We have that single term distribution. So we're going to do exactly the same thing, but I want you to do this. <laughs> Actually, I want you not to do something. Don't do it in your head. Okay, do it in your head. A lot of people would give me the square root of 12 if I asked you to do that in your head. Because your head thinks, your head thinks it's a weird thing to say, right? Your head thinks. Square root of 12, because you're multiplying. That's not what we're doing. What we're actually doing is the square root of 2 times 6 plus, of course, the square root of 2 times the square root of 10. I'm having you write it out like that because hopefully that's going to show you that that is exactly like these two problems I've just shown you. Exactly the same. You're just doing two problems in one here. One of them you can multiply together into the same root. One of them you can't because you don't have two roots. Which one can you multiply together under the same root, the first term or the second term? So here we get something plus the square root of 20. Sure. Here we would get not the square root of 12. What are you going to get? Six square root of 2. Okay. Raise your hand if you're all right with that so far. Okay, now, are you done? If I ask that question, probably not. Right, probably not. Why not? Well, this, is, this looks great, 6 root 2. This one doesn't look so great. Why? You can always simplify it. So that's why we cover simplification first. If you simplify the square root of 20, I'm going to do some of these in my head. I'm going to start doing these, the, just the numbers in my head. What number goes into the square root of 20 that you can take the square root of? So 4 times 5, you're going to get 2 root 5. Do you see it? So out of, out of here, square root of 4 times 5, that's going to give you 6 square root 2 plus 2 square root 5. The last thing you check for is if you can actually combine those. That's what we just covered is, is addition. Can you combine them? No. Nope. Square roots, check. Five and two can. can't. Can't do it. As far as you can go. So that's your expression. Let's do a couple more. I'll give you maybe two to do on your own, and we'll be 